Good evening and salutations, my Days of Elias fans. So, before we get into the episode, and my mood starts to go downhill a little bit, um, so I just checked out the previews to Beyond Salem, and, uh, I, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm really excited for it. They're bringing back some old school people, um, I think her name is Billy. I forgot the actress that plays her. I only remember her because she was on a show called um, Soap Talk with um, Ty Treadway. But I remember that was a character she used to play back in the day. And I, the trailer looks really good. The trailer looks really good. And it's one of those things where it's like, I know it's going to be like a little um, mini series or whatever. But if they plan on going like full steam ahead. And that's, like, the energy? Yeah. Yeah. Because I kept... And I was not there saying yes, I was like, you know, I don't know. Because it's like three. You know, it's like three, you know, three soap operas. And, you know, I'd rather do two great instead of three. Womp womp. Um, which I still do feel that way. But I, um... I'm going to be watching it. I mean, provided that, you know, because I got Peacock. And, um, you know, provided that there's not, like, a, you know, well, if you want to sit there and see Beyond Salem, you got to pay X amount of money or whatever. Like, if they're just going to be showing it on Peacock, like, for everyone to watch, yeah, 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 I'm going to be, I'm going to be watching it, going to be reviewing it. Um, I didn't think I actually would, because, whatever, um. The timing and everything like that, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make the time. I'm gonna make the time. I really want to sit there and watch it. It's still kind of up in the air, but I'm like 99, 98% sure I'm gonna watch it and review it. Um, yes, I want to watch this. <laughs> it looks good. Um, so, with that being said. Let's get into this episode. Let's get into this episode because um, I have some choice words for a couple of people. Like I always do. You already know one person that I have choice words for. I'm just going to sit there and let you guess. And I'm going to sit there and get to the other two. Chanel and Chloe. Go with Chloe for a minute. Let's just go with Chloe for a minute. So, Chloe and Brady are in the same bed. I don't give a damn if Brady was like, all right, this is going to be Switzerland or the, the Great Wall or whatever he want to call it, okay? You're in bed with another man, okay? Like, that image right there is a problem. Philip. Opens the door because he apparently he just had a you know like key for the door, which I'm not gonna lie. Um, any other normal circumstances that would have probably came across as creepy as hell is like, ah, uh, why am I not surprised? <sighs> I say this with a grain of salt. I mean, well, not with a grain of salt. I I say this. Not to be offensive or anything like that, but I understand that this is the quote-unquote woman's fantasy. And so there's a lot of liberties in this scene that I'm just like, okay, alright, Chloe. I'm just going to give you the string. I'm just going to just let you just slowly start to hang yourself. She flips out and gets angry, like, live it, like, how dare you, you don't trust me, this, that, and the third, blah, blah, blah. Now, remember, I, I, I did sit there and say woman's fantasy. Um, to her defense, to her defense, I mean, 
you know, she said that she was going to be going on a trip, a business trip, with Brady, and that it's just business and nothing else. And he flies over there just to check. Okay? This is exactly what Bella was sitting there saying. So, to her defense, I understand why she flipped out because, you know, he did, she did sit there and say, one second. To her defense, she said she was doing a business trip and this guy rushes over there just to make sure because, you know, he's jealous, comes across as jealous, paranoid, and all this other stuff. So, I, I give that credit to her. The only credit that she's going to get this whole damn night. <sighs> Chloe, how dare you actually sit there and try to take the high, ho the, the high road on this. Like, well not the high road, but... <laughs> the fact of the matter is, I don't give a damn what the situation is. Okay? If... If a man sees their girlfriend in bed with another man, I don't give a damn what... I mean, unless y'all were, like, just escaping, like, death itself, um, it's a bad look. It's a hell of a bad look. So I do not blame Philip. I honestly tell you the truth, the fact that he was that calm is, um... A testament of strength because any other man that would have walked in there and saw that that image it I can't even begin to tell you just like to try not to use curse words it's a bad look okay and yet if the roles were reversed it would still be a bad look she gets on her little high horse and she's all like, well, if you don't trust me, da 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 we're not going to have anything. Like, like she tries to reaffirm that she's wearing a pants in this relationship or something. I'm just like, this chick done lost her damn mind. And when Philip was like, all right, fine, you know, whatever, I understand. You know, we can sit there and take the jet to New York. All right, fine, we can sit there and bring Brady with us. This woman has the audacity to sit there and be like, no, you're going to go back to Salem and we're going to sit there and stay at the hotel tonight because you trust me, right? I'm like, this woman must be out her French toast mind. Did she literally just say, because you trust me? After seeing her in the bed with another man, you trust me. Wow. I'm like, girl, <laughs> okay, and of course that's when I sit there and bring in the woman's fantasy part, because in reality, I am 99% sure that scene would have played out completely different, but, you know, for giggles and word I'm not going to say, Brady, uh, Philip agrees, of course this is after... Brady, you know, acts like a child itself, you know, oh, you know, I'm touching her, look, I'm touching her, look at me, I'm doing this. Brady, how old are you? What that says, he leaves, and, you know, he gets back into bed and act like everything is just, oh, <laughs> it's just business as usual, and she sleeps on the floor. And I'm sitting there looking like, I, I'm gonna keep the, I'm gonna keep what I'm thinking in my head to myself. I'm 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 just gonna look at it and be like, okay, cool. Allie, Allie is my next. I think at this point we all know how much this woman vexes me and I I say woman very loosely. I really do. So Allie isn't there talking to Nicole 
And I, mm, I really feel like the people in Allie's life, they don't do her any favors by treating her in this very tiptoe, babyish way. Um, I mean, she lays out that, you know, she, she had, had a fight with her brother about Chanel and was not they call him a player, this, that, and the third, and she, quote, unquote, call herself doing, you know, doing something good and, and looking out her for her friend, which is, like, complete and utter BS, but, okay, sweetheart, continue. She's going on and on about that. And, um, you know, Nicole's like, you sure it's nothing more than that? You sure you're not jealous? And at first she tries to play it off like, no, I'm not jealous. We're good friends and, 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 and I'm with, what you call it, so we're all good. I love how you said that and I felt none of it. Like, the conviction wasn't there. None of it. And finally, you know, she's like, yeah, you know, um, Nicole kind of got her to sit there and open up by herself by talking about her experience with Rafe and how she felt jealous and called her friend a bunch of names and everything like that. And basically was like, listen, you need to sit there and talk to, um, you know, you need to sit there and talk to Chanel and really figure this thing out, like really figure out where your feelings are, you know, just figure it out, like literally, um, so she agrees to do that, and then Allie's like, you know, yeah, you're right, you know, like maybe I am jealous or whatever, but then she's like, you know, how am I, how am I gonna sit there and face them, and this is where the baby in part comes in. Oh, they want you in their life, you know, they messed up too or something like that. I'm pretty sure that's what she said. She was like, well, you know, they, they messed up also. How? How, how did they mess up? Ali stormed in there like a 12-year-old child pretty much, um, had a temper, had a, a temper tantrum and somehow they messed up. Oh, it's all going to work out just fine. Nicole, you couldn't have actually said anything else? That's your... That's your advice. You couldn't have said, hey, yeah, you know, you're a little rough on them, and, you know, you may need to sit there and all of your apology, too, but at the end of the day, that's your best friend, that's your brother, and they're going to love you regardless. And I would accept that that... But no, you're fine, Allie. You didn't do anything wrong. And, you know, honestly, to tell you the truth, I'm not going to lie. I'm sitting there looking at that. I'm like, Nicole, this is exactly why your life right now is the way it is. Awesome. And on the other side, you got Chanel sitting there talking to Paul, Paulina about her relationship with Johnny. And at one point, you know, Pauline is like, listen, maybe she's jealous of, of your relationship with Johnny. Maybe she wants you for herself. And Chanel was like, then maybe I shouldn't be with Johnny, you know, like Allie's my, my friend, you know, she's a really good friend. Maybe I shouldn't be with Johnny anymore. And I was like, have you lost your damn mind? You're sitting there telling me that you don't want to be with Johnny anymore because your friend is upset about it. I don't even know what to say about that. I can't even sit there and fathom the level of stupidity that literally just came out of her mouth. But there is hope. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Pauline is like, listen, at the end of the day, that's your friend, and she wants you to be happy, and you know what, you are not going to, you know, pretty much she's like, yo, listen, don't let Allie tell you what to do. If you want this guy, you want to be with this guy, you be with this guy. If she's your friend, she'll understand. Finally, the voice of re... 
Just the fact that she said that just irked the living hell out of me. Anyway, um, they, they work, they worked that out. Rafe comes home, sees Ava in the dark, which I'm not going to lie, it's kind of creepy as hell. Um, with a suitcase ready, ready to leave. They talk things out, and I mean they actually talk things out. Like, Rafe actually opens up and admits that, you know, listen, we were friends, but I'm going to be honest, felt like I was crossing the line. I felt like I, I did start to have feelings for it, and I was like, bro, listen... I am so glad you said that because up until this point, you've been walking around with this high morale like, you know, I get that Ava's being jealous and whatever, but bro, it's not like she doesn't actually have anything to be jealous about. Like, you've been having fantasies about her, you've been having sex dreams about her, which <laughs> it's just like, you've been crossing the line, okay? And you've been sitting there looking at Ava like she's lost her damn mind. Like, what are you talking about? I don't have any feelings for her. What, what are you, nuts? Oh, who, who are you going to sit there and talk? Are you getting all jealous, all paranoid? I can't deal with your crap. Meanwhile, your feelings gotten so damn bad, you are imagining stuffed animals talking to you. So when he, when he admitted it, after he told about Nicole kind of, you know, distancing himself from, you know, like, the situation and understanding where, where Ava's coming from, and he confessed that I was like, finally, you're actually on the same page. It took you long enough, but you got there eventually, so, good job. Anyway, they make up, and, um, they're back on track. EJ... And Johnny. Also talk about the situation with Chanel and Allie. And I honestly tell you too, at first, EJ was just listening, being supportive, giving advice. Nice little father and son moment. Hell, actually lowered Johnny's on guard down and, you know, he was... You know, and EJ was like, you know, I miss having talks like this, you know. And then you know, he was like, he does too. He was giving them some really great advice as far as like, listen. You know, regardless of what Ali Smith did tell and Chanel, just be yourself. Just take it slow. Show who you are. Show your interest in her. And show her something beyond the fact that you're just going to sit there and try to better. And... Your actions and your personality will speak for itself, regardless of what she's saying. Um, so he was really giving some good advice. And then that didn't really last too long because, well, you know, he's EJ. And, um, you know, ulterior motives is definitely his thing. He's like, you know, I miss this, this talk and, and everything like that. I miss us being close and... You know, maybe this is exactly why I want you to sit there and come and work, you know, work with, you know, work at the company. You know, so we can have that time and we can, we can talk and, and, and just really kind of just, you know, get back to where we, where we used to be at. And Johnny's like, yep. Manipulation. One of your many talents, pretty much. Calls him out for it. He's like, I'm not doing it. I want to be in film. AJ not liking um, pretty much Johnny saying no to him. It's just like, you honestly think that Chanel wants to be with somebody who can't make a, their dreams happen. Like, she's not going to want to be with somebody who makes films on a phone. Like, it's, it's not a passion, it's a pipe dream, pretty much. And just really just tears him down. And, you know, Johnny stands firm, like, yo, listen, I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's just how it is. And, of course, EJ being EJ just has to get the last word in. Well, when she leaves you, don't sit there inside and warn you. Started off with a nice father and son moment. And ended with, well, you know, another EJ moment. 
Was he always like this? I've heard he was actually worse. I mean, the fact of the matter is, from what Lucas said, that there was a beam that was like crushing him. And EJ was like, listen, I'll help you, but only if I could be with Sammy in the, um, you know, do the devil's tango. He didn't deny it. Now, I don't know the whole story, so if anyone wants to really sit there and tell me about that, but, I mean, I guess this could be considered another classic EJ moment. <laughs> this guy is really something else, and I love it. Here for it. I think that's about it. If I missed anything, please write it down in the comment section below. I want to thank you all for watching. Be safe. See you in the next video.